Hello everyone, I'm Robert Icy. Most of you will know me, but for you that don't, I'm the UK's number one unconscious mind therapist. And welcome to the Mindclap podcast. Hello everyone, I'm Robert Icy, and welcome to the Mindclap podcast. I'm joined today by one of my own, South London's greatest, Tama Hassan, starred in fantastic movies. One of my favourites, The Business, Football Factory, Dead Man Running, um, Kick Ass, and many, many more. So, um, it's an honour to have you here today, Tam. Thank you very much, mate. Good to be here, mate. That was a good intro. You like that one? Yeah, yeah melted on time. the first one, didn't you? <laughs> so he was trying to get away with that. I knew that. Was that, was that, that trying to get away with that. About the eighth take. <laughs> melted. <laughs> melted. <laughs> stuttering, stuttering. Good to see you, mate. I didn't say I was around that. <laughs> no, thanks for joining us, Tam. And, um, mate. I've, and I've explained a little bit what we're doing about the mind and mind kind and everything. And I just wanted to ask you some questions about, like, growing up in South London, because, you know, like, you were a celebrity now, but when I was growing up in South London, you were a celebrity before you was a celebrity, do you know what I mean? You had like <laughs> famous night, before I was famous. You was, mate. You had nightclubs, restaurants, the boxing gym. I mean, you're a big boxer. You had the um, football club at, uh, was Greenies it Park, Greenies, Greenies, Park Greenies, Park Greenies Park Park Football, football club. club. I mean, you've always been a ghetto and, um, you know, someone to look up to from the manor. So it's um, sure. it's good to see, you know, see how far you've gone. It's amazing. So how did how was it um, growing up in New Cross, Tam? It was all right. It, it was lovely. You know, like people who, uh, who, who always talk about, I grew up in the flats, it was such a bad place. It was never that for me, it was beautiful. Yeah. I loved being in the flats, I loved being in the estates. Growing up in New Cross, I think there was, uh, um, you know, the West Indians, the Irish, the Turks and the Greeks there, so there weren't a lot of foreigners, so we kind of grew up around a bit of a racist society, you know, yeah. the, the local English lads would always hate us and have a go at us and stuff, so. That was the only a tough bit of it, but... So was that a lot of rucking on the streets as a kid? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, It it was a lot of rucking, but... When, I mean, you look at me now, I'm six foot three, and yeah, yeah. I built like a concrete <laughs> slag, do you know what I mean? But then I wasn't, I was like a little chubby, really pal Turkish kid with a mop of fucking hair that like, looked like Oasis, like bass in there, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But And I, and I always used to get bullied, but I had plenty of art, plenty of arsehole, and it wasn't my size that bothered me I'd, I'd go in and have a fight where i could because we had to but apart from all of that i don't really have bad memories of growing no. up in new cross i'm born and bred new because a lot of the turks and the Cypriots went to north london but my mum was a bit of a hippie chick so she took me to she thought i'm not going to sit over there with all that lot yeah. you know what i mean so she, we went over we went over to uh, to new cross south east london and i'm grateful for that to tell you the truth because it could have been a lot different over there yeah. um you know, they say the best best thing to come out of, best thing to uh, come out of North London is the road leading south. <laughs> yeah, that one. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. true. Many words, mate. It's true. But uh, yeah, so, so no, growing up was lovely. Growing up was it, really good. So, from as a kid, you was a good boxer. I remember you. you I boxed. Up, you yeah, were a good boxer. How did you get into that? I boxed from, from the age of nine to uh, to about to my sort of early mid twenties. Um, and growing up as a kid. I was always fighting for some reason. I was always fighting. I think my mum just had enough. And she took me to judo and it bored the life out of me. Every day. And I was a, I used to bite a lot. I still bite now. If I ever tell her, I'll bite <laughs> someone. Do you know what I mean? And uh, I always used to bite people and get angry. And I just couldn't get it. And Ginger May, who used to run a uh, wonderful man, he used to remind me of Mickey at the early Rocky movies. He's, she was like yeah. him. He was fucking brilliant. Always a roll up out of his mouth. Could do a, f a million press ups with a roll up in his mouth. Strong <laughs> as anything. He had three boys that were great boxers. And he used to run a gym uh, in a church hall called All Saints. And my mum was mates with him and she went, do something with him. For crying out loud. Please, Please yeah. do something with him. <laughs> so I went there with my big brother. And growing up in them days, your big brother used to always beat you up, bully you. It was always that way. And he used to literally bash the shit out of me. Like it was horrendous what he used to do so um it was early I'm, I'm going to get to the point it was early on that ginger knew i had some kind of a talent uh, and i'll tell you why they were, <coughs> we didn't have a ring they couldn't afford a ring so they used to put the church uh, sort of benches around and we used to play this uh, this exercise where you couldn't hit the face you could only hit from shoulder to hip yeah and <coughs> probably a lot of people my age that was back in the day was it yeah. was a, it was an exercise we used to do and if someone hits the face you get a free shot it wasn't that he's got a standing you him, but you can move around and try and Before find that, that spot and catch him. So my brother just straight away took a liberty and started slapping me around the head. And then he went, oh, he said, right, you've got a couple of, couple of uh, shots. shots. Just move around and try and pick it. First day in the gym, this was. First day. And uh, I'll never forget it. I didn't need two shots or three. 
I thought, he's going to fucking have it here. He's got a license here. I've got a license here. And I hit him, and I remember it came from, the, it, the tingle, the energy came from my toes, drove through my body, and I hit him in his fucking face, and I shattered his nose at that young age and to this day he'd tell you he still can't breathe out of it still fucked still fucked yeah so you can imagine i mean as a kid to i think he was about 13 at the time nine so yeah three four years older than me and uh he, he threw him out he said you can't and then he started bashing me up he started hammering me do you know what yeah, i mean yeah. big brother and then he threw him out and he said uh, he said you're staying and it was only after my 10th bat, I said, what was it about me? And he went, let me tell you something, son. He said, anyone that can do that to their own flesh and blood, <laughs> yeah, 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 I feel yeah, sorry for anyone that ain't your yeah, flesh and your family. Yeah, and that's, yeah, yeah. that's how it kind of went from there. And I was very, <laughs> I was very, you know, tall, skinny, athletic. I was, I how many years you boxed for time? Many years, many years. From the age of nine, right up to sort of early 20s. Uh, didn't get around to turning pro, obviously. I've got a detached retina, hands uh -huh. went. Uh, nose, as you can see, look, it's still, it's still okay, gone yeah. and, and but back there back in them days you had to pass medicals and stuff yeah, i just yeah. couldn't get through a medical and it went doctor basically if it goes again you could lose your sight is it worth it i was devastated no, I was dev that's all i ever wanted to be was a pro footballer or a boxer and i was shit at football and i was i was just i think i was good at that do you know what i mean i could have boxed in so you thought you'd buy both clubs I thought oh, I'd do both. Yeah. I've got a boxing club upstairs yeah, and I had the football yeah, club yeah. downstairs yeah but that was later on in life uh, rob but um and, and, and back in the day then as well, it was really cool to be a boxer. It was like, you as a boxer, yeah. people left you alone. Especially working class areas. Yeah, like working class areas. Yeah. areas. It was like, the discipline was great. It was fantastic. You trained, you know, my whole life. I didn't have a drink or smoke or, or, or experience drugs or anything until later on in life. Yeah. My mates were all sort of smoking weed and drinking at 12, 11, yeah. as you do. The and then I, I was I was up running every morning. I was really dedicated to it, and, and I really wanted to do something because I always, always wanted to be a sportsman. And I, you know, and it, and it kind of got to to that point where it was you can't do it, you can't fight. And then it was like, okay, well, I'm going to go and find women, booze, and a good time. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's where it all I changed. Yeah, and then it all went downhill from then. <laughs> but it's, it's no, funny. I mean, no, no, I, see, I see some of my mates now, Rob, and and. I don't want to say it, but a lot of them look like they're throwing the towel in. And, yeah, and I was kind of the younger one, only by a couple of years. But when, when you're 18 or 20, you're 60, it was different. But now they're sort of in their, uh, I mean, 52 and their 54s. But mm. Darby's and fucking grey hair and still in the booze yeah, zone. I walk in and they go, don't you age? And I'm like, I probably drink. I've had my moments of drinking. Yeah. I've had my moments of having a good time and, and experience everything that I did. But I think because where I started late, you know, my, my, my haggering <laughs> period was a little bit late, like <laughs> this, you know what I mean? But saying, saying that, um, you know, your boxing career your boxing career ended, but as I say, you've always been a creator. Like one thing, you know, look at, you know, the size of you as a celebrity now, but even when, you know, from them days, I like now, how did you get the vision to sort of build those sort of nightclubs or build the, you know, get, get into that stuff. That, what was your vision? Was it just for a better life? What was the vision of a young man? Well, I, I'll tell you what, I was very close to my mum. I don't, I, didn't, I don't know who my father is. Uh, a man came in who took my mum, married my mum, I think it was six months ago, who is my father. But yeah. I think from a very, very young age, it started where I just couldn't take an order. Yeah. Like I would have got court martialed and, and, and killed if Could I was in the army. Them, army. Yeah. I would have got shot if I was just fucking firing squad. I just couldn't be told <laughs> what to do. I was, even as a young young man, my mum, you know, mum used to say, you're not allowed out. I used to climb out the window, go out. Fuck, I got knocked over, I think, nine times. Broke nearly every bone in my body, just climbing Jump out the window. window. <laughs> Jumping out the window, so I wanted to play and stay out. And I just never do what I want. So I think my mum, from a very early age, I'm very close with my mum. And from a very early age, she knew I couldn't work for someone, so I didn't really ever get to work for anyone. So she started me off on a market store at the age of 12. Oh, blind, Yeah, down, down, down at Eastland. Well, I'd say Eastland, that, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I started working in, uh, the only sort of real job I had, because we had to do it, was I was stacking shelves in Londis so from, I think, 10 to 12. And then uh, I think I ended up beating him up or something, the, 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 the owner. I just went in on him, I had a fire, got sacked. And then after that, my mum, was she was a dressmaker oh, yeah. and she used to do dresses for Selfridges and all these places and oh, they used wow. to have 69.99 labels on them and she used to get them for like a fiver and, or a tenner and then we used to half price so there was always a move yeah, from yeah, very yeah. young age and uh, and and she set my market store uh, uh, 
uh, Nine Elms, East Lane, uh, Bromley. Oh. She was just we used to move around the stores, and, and I remember she had a beat on. We used to put the seats back and put all the dresses in the bag. She got a roof rack on it, and we used to put the stool on it. We used to rack it up and. And it, and I think that's where it really started the entrepreneurial side of things. It was just that. Did that help your people skills? You think? on the market. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was very, believe it or not, I'm still quite shy. I'm, I'm, I, I know, I know. It's, it's mad to say, but it depends what situation. I'm, if I'm comfortable, I'm, I'm open. Yeah. I'm, I make sure if I'm sitting in a surroundings where it's you and the boys and yeah, we're yeah. there I'll hold court and I'll, I've always been an entertainer yeah but if I'm not if I'm in a if I'm in surroundings where I'm not sure about or I don't know people I'll go always kind of sit bit. quiet and I'll go into myself a little bit and I think entertainers are very much like that anyway do you think that is is shyness or do you think it's that was that I, Growing up in South Africa, shyness yourself, might be the wrong do you, word. Do you think, I think it might be like you're, you're, anal- you're not comfortable in situations? You have to analyse everything that you feel comfortable. Yeah, I think growing up, and especially where we grew up, and you know, you know the people that I knew and I grew up with, and I was around, and what my life skills were given to me at the time yeah. was, was mainly survival, and you know, making money is easy if you can't make it, take yeah. it. You know, it was that sort of thing, and. I think everything sort of, we analyse everything, we sort of suss everything as you walk yeah. in and those old traits don't go, you know, I remember people that I used to, and I won't say any names, but they'd yeah. walk in a restaurant, look under the table, see if it's bugged, they'd always talk with their hand over their mouth, you know, yeah. talking in slang and code words and stuff and I think those sort of things are always installed in you because even when I walk in a room, I walk in here, the first thing I do is look. See what's Who's there? What's yeah. this? Who's that? And then I'll speak I'll to someone. Well. Do you I'll know what I mean? I relate to that. Hundred you know, percent. There, there was a long time where I couldn't sit my back to the door because these stupid things were installed in you. You want to know who's coming when, through the when door? When I moved out the Cup from Bermondsey, it was a big shock for me because I mean, I, now the pubs are like around El Kent Road. I used to walk into a pub. It take me at least fifteen minutes before I could relax. I'd look around, I see where the fire extinguisher, where the doors are, ashtrays. You know, then I, then I see what the people are like in the pub. Then I could settle, then I could enjoy my pint. But it and took me about six months a year before I could sort of walk in a pub and just and, relax. And do you, know why that, do you know why that was, Robert? Not that you had any enemies. It's no, just the people we yeah. was around yeah, you didn't know would, would switch on a sixpence. Yeah. They'd just like switch yeah. like that. All of a sudden, yeah, fun, someone's fun, coming fun, through the door, fun, someone's fun. getting it, someone's yeah. getting shot, someone gets that. Yeah. Because someone always had a bit of egg. If yeah, it weren't you, time, yeah. someone always had a bit of egg. So you had to have your wits about it. You had to be on your toes all the time. And that, as you get older, gets fucking tiring and monotonous yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and horrible. And you just, you know, I never ever thought I'd get to an age where I want to kick back. And I always thought I'd never be that person. Yeah, yeah. Never be that, never be this, never be that. I, I'm still not to an extent because I, I want to go and have a white collar fight. I'm training with the boxing really? fight for charity. Yeah, I want to do oh, some fighting and that. But then I, was, I sparred the other week and... Oh What's God, that like though, yeah? It hurts, mate. It hurts. Oh, it does, oh, yeah. it. It's not like when you're young, is it's it? It's like you get hit in the face and your brain shakes. <laughs> and then you get hit in the stomach and the pain just stays, stays there, there. there. It just won't go away. Whereas, you I, know, know. I used to box as a kid. I remember getting to about 31, 32 and going back for a spar. Even the geese just clumped around here with a... Well, you boxed as well. Yeah, yeah when the geese just clumped around here with a... With a yeah, you know, just horrible, with a pads. isn't it? Oh, mate, once you're at 30, you fucking hurt. You don't like mate, it as I'll much. I'll get a you paper cut and start screaming. <laughs> <laughs> ah, like that. It's just angry. Get a paper cut. Do you know what I mean? I think I'm going to find, I, I think I'm gonna find a, an, an 85-year-old <laughs> yeah. man who's having a, a, an old life crisis. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what you're right. Yeah. No, you'll be sweet. Spark him a bolt, you know. No, I mean? You can move. I've seen you shape up your mustard. I'm all right. I've right. got a little bit of that. Great footwork as well. I see um, Aaron Crash showed me little videos teaching his little boy, and he's like, Look at Tanner's moving around. around. Yeah, yeah, he good footwork. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, know what? For a big man, I've always been light on my feet. It's quite it's quite funny. I, I do, uh, I, I mimic boxers, and uh, and I do like, I do Garcia, and I do the speed. Garcia, and I Garcia, go, Garcia, yeah, Garcia, yeah, Garcia, yeah. But my hands go really quick, and then I can move <laughs> my, my, my hand to feet coordination is Spot really solid. good. Yeah. So I can move my hands and my feet at the same time and pivot in circles. <laughs> and for a big man, I'm light on my feet, and people are like, how is that possible? <laughs> but I think it's just because I've always done it. You you only lose that that, that gift you if you stop. Do remember being a kid with boxing? And I, was like, and I was going on about visualisation. When I was a kid, I remember learning to skip. I watched one of the older kids skipping, and I, used to, I could see his footwork in my head, so then I used to practice it. I'd be visualising his footwork. Did you ever do anything like that in boxing? As you said, because you just said you used to cop- mimic people. So did, did still do, similar? still do. I still mimic people all the time. But yeah, listen, you know, I think, I can't remember who said it. I think it was um, McGregor that said there's no such thing as 
talent, talent. only obsession only obsession yeah, yeah, and, and training it and it, I think it's so true you have to have an element of it listen yeah, I mean yeah, my kids my kids I'd always send them out to learn free sports and there are some things just as you're genetic and who you are yeah, as a person yeah. or a human certain things you're better than that than others because I think your mind you'll probably quote me if I'm wrong but I think your mind will like something more than something else, which will determine you to be better at what you like. Like you don't like, yeah, you know, ballerinas. I mean, if you look at the human, of what I've studied now, and I think the human body fascinates me right now. I do a lot of case study. And I spend a lot of time on YouTube looking at what the human body can do. And as as I've grown older and the human body's evolved, you know, those kids holding fingers and their bodies out, and yes, man, these yeah. kids climbing up walls, parkour, like oh, what yeah. you know, what like what the monkeys do in the, yeah. in the jungle, and what we what what the animals do in the jungle, we're starting to be able to do as human beings. So I don't think anybody, unless you're unfortunate enough to be born with a disability or or you know a serious illness, because I don't believe I don't believe in mm. hereditary. There's nothing hereditary. No, no. Everybody's unique. You know, oh, my mum went bald, I'm going to go bald. Oh, my dad had a yeah. heart attack, oh, I'm going to have a heart No, mate. That's you believe it. You yeah, achieve yeah, it. That's that's you believe it, you achieve it. But I don't believe that hereditary bullshit. So I just think if, if you know, if you're good at something and you, you want to do it, you will eventually get good at it and you just have to practice. It's like, you know, in football, they say, get your minutes in. I haven't played, if I don't play football regularly, if I take a season out of an injury, when you go back, you're blowing out your ass. You can't yeah. kick the ball. You can't. You can't do. It. But as you start practicing and as you start repeating the same thing, you'll get better at it. And I think that that that's what it repetition, is. I just think with the boxing, I wanted to do it. I've always, you know, I used to watch the boxers and I, I used to love the the, the the the. I think more than anything, looking back at it, I used to love the energy that they used to get from people because I love people. I hate people, but I love people. Do you understand? Yeah, what I'm, saying? Yeah, I'm a people's yeah. person. Um, but I used to love the energy that they get from the crowd. I used to love the energy that the footballers used to get. And I used to, the appreciation from the crowds, I think that energy that was driving you from those masses of people was always something like a drug to me. It was like, oh, I want to feel that. that. Yeah. And even now, the success I've had as an actor, I would take being a singer over an actor. And I've said just, yeah, 100%. If just I could like swap before, now, really? you know, my passion's always been music and instruments yeah. and stuff but i've never really had the time to do it because i was always at sports and stuff but if you said to me tama um go and do a spielberg film and be the number one a-lister on the planet or go and be liam gallagher or noel gallagher and play on stage in front of you have the stage then you have the stage all day long people the all day long yeah, the energy yeah, from the good. people because we're, as actors we don't get that people think it's really glamorous what we do but it's not mm. it's a lonely existence mate it's, it's three months at the table for one yeah and if you don't like the person that you work with I remember with, you said before about growing up um, you know bringing your kids up that you're always away a lot of the time you said that always away yeah you're yeah, always you away up. table for one and for me as well I was so busy I was probably one of the busiest British actors of my time was, I mean, think about it, nearly 60 movies in 22 years. It's fucking unheard of. It was mental, wasn't it? I was doing two, three films at once. Oh, no. But then the only bit of glamour we get is the red carpet at the premiere. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I must have been a 20 of them, of, of the films. Of, because sometimes the you contract... You can't get there. You're somewhere else. You're yeah. somewhere else filming. Can't, can't get there. So, but I just, I just think the energy... And listen, it's lovely when you go out and, and you know, you, you're... You, we're public servants at the end of the day and it's nice when you you get appreciation from the public and people mm. like what you do and you're nice to them and that's really nice it's, it's the, the the lovely part of it but i think the energy of of what you get from a crowd is, is what really buzz. excites me hence why i wanted to be a sportsman that's why i wanted to be a pro athlete and on the, the way of visualization and i spoke to you many times about it mm. um when did that when do you remember that first coming into your lifetime like seeing yourself being something bigger and better than what you was or having or getting something that you <coughs> wanted to have without the means and I know you was going to get it remember there was a story you told me about a bike once when you was a, a young lad and um this this whole visualization that wonderful people like yourself Robert have gone away and studied and understood yeah. you know this you can say that shamans from thousands of years ago you know Egyptians all of these sort of cultures that were around long before us that yeah. used herbal medicine that, they had that then, but I think thinking about visualization, uh, motivational speaking, 
setting the mind, um, uh, manifesting, and all of these beautiful things that have come to the forefront. And if you think about it, it's only really the last five yeah, years. It, is, yeah. it hasn't been long because the world has been open to it from, say, like The Secret, yeah. which was a really commercial... There's way more than The Secret, as you know, but yeah. it was a beautiful platform and a stepping stone to, to open the eyes to, to, people. The eyes to yeah. people, which was an ancient yeah. uh, a secret that they call where people were visualising, manifesting and doing all of this stuff. Uh, I think what, what I did and what a lot of kids did subconsciously without knowing would, and I'm sure a lot of people that are 30 plus will remember the, the old Freeman's catalogue. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, every yeah. night my mum yeah, used to give me a Freeman's catalogue yeah. and you used to go, I want that. And for, you look at it, you go, oh, do you think my mum can, can pay 40 pence a mum? <laughs> and you go to her and she'd tell you, bollocks, get out your mug, you're fucking good luck, you got a bit of dinner on the table. Yeah, yeah. But you'd sit there and, and always think, oh, this bike, I want this bike, I want this bike, I want this bike. <laughs> and then I'd have cars on the, on the walls. I was always in a motorsport and cars and, and, and I always remember properties because we lived in a shithole we were all we was loads of us in in, in three rooms because that's all we could afford I mean we we always ate we always yeah. got fed you know my mum and dad worked hard and there was a lot of love in the room but I remember just all you know especially being foreigners we'd have visitors from Cyprus and then we'd have to give our beds up because your aunt, your mum, yeah, sister yeah. comes. It was just the culture, and then yeah, you, yeah. it would be great because we'd all be on a blanket in the front room. But it got to where, oh, you know, why aren't you going to piss off? Like, <laughs> fuck off back to Cyprus, I'm going to be bed back. Do you know what I mean? But you just couldn't do it because we would, our parents were very strict. So I think it was it was always property, cars, and like material things. Yeah. Like, and where we was poor as well, and we was foreign, we didn't celebrate Christmas. So Christmas was always, it was always a big thing mm -hmm. in my life now. And, uh, and and you, you'd want what other kids had, because for some fucking reason, all my mates were always fucking rich. <laughs> what say rich? They always had more money than me. Yeah, yeah, they'd always yeah. have the best top or the nice training. Yeah, Their yeah, mum and dad would be, yeah, I yeah. think the old man was a drug dealer and the mum was a fucking oyster or something. Yeah. So they'd always have always have the best the best bits, and we just never had that, because you know, my mum and dad are, are, are yeah. uneducated, hard working, you know, village people. Yeah. And, you know, the cars would go up and you'd subconsciously manifest this without even realising you're manifesting. But if you want it that badly, it will come. And I remember visualising this bike. I want this bike. And it was a rally bike. Rally, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. rally bikes were the bikes to have. Like the chopper style one. I nicked, yeah, I nicked a chopper. I nicked a chopper. I remember, I nicked a grifter. Right? Grifters came with a free gear. Yeah, I had a tomahawk. <laughs> Right, and then, I mean, listen, where, where, where we come from, I mean, you, you, you've nicked it off someone who's nicked it. Nicked it, yeah, yeah. So you, yeah, know, yeah, you, you yeah. know your time of it's limited. Yeah, someone yeah, else so off you. Yeah. Well, someone yeah, bigger's yeah, going to give you a clip around you yeah. and take it off you, so <laughs> you kind of enjoy your time with it. Uh, it just gets passed around, doesn't it? Someone's nicked it out of a shop, and then you just, <laughs> someone, <laughs> you, can't, you can't turn yeah. your back, can you? And I remember just manifesting this bike, I want the bike, I want the bike, I want the bike, but there was nothing in there, and I know that now, there was nothing in that want that had any substance. I just wanted the fucking bike. Back, yeah. I think it was to impress a bird or something. Do you know what I mean? I'd, I'd, you know, I'd forget the bike, I'd make the bird. Really, the I, was, I was always yeah. fucking crazy over birds. I always <laughs> loved Doris. I was a kid, I was a girl mad. And, um, and being a little foreigner, you couldn't get them, could you? But, you know, the Yonkey girls, they used to call me, they weren't going to go with me, were they? Mama, they would never let them go with a foreigner. So you just stuck there, innit? And I said before, anyway, I'm not going to back into that now. So, but you, you'd, I wanted the bike so badly. For some reason, something happened. My mum, my mum did really well with saying, and she always used to try and get her stuff. Bless her little cotton. She always wanted her kids to have the best. And I got the bike, and the bike lasted, I think, a day. And then I, I, I fell off it, and it snapped the um, cogs, the wheel, the, the you know, spokes. the spokes. Where yeah, you yeah. got the pedals, you got the spokes, and it was a ten speed. Oh, it was a racing bike and it was white and it was beautiful mate and red rally down the side <laughs> changing gear from this yeah, bit here yeah, you know yeah. 10 speed i was in the gap one either side i was like yeah <laughs> took it to school put it in the bike shed Damn. come out daniel gone so i said to me mum i said mum I've, I've fell off the bike and you know what they're like babe you've, you've had it a day and you smashed it well, blah, blah, blah. I'll send it back to get replied. Never see the bike again. again. It's probably for you kill yourself. Never right? see the bike. No, not even like your little fucking shit. What you yeah, 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 poison yeah, yeah. ants, as you call me. I mean, every you touch, you fucking break. <laughs> so I never see the bike again. And then I remember when I started, I, I finished school and I, I started off as a painting decorator and I was 
doing all these beautiful houses. You remember the lakes down in Burma? Yeah, downtown. Well, well, the lakes were, were fucking gaffs that were, they built oh, on from, water. Yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? It was yeah, like, yeah. fucking hell, like. Uh, at the time, I remember them going out on the You're built on the water, yeah, like, yeah. Well, where'd you they live? Down off. the lakes. <laughs> you know what I mean? you got to get down the lakes. And before I knew it, I had one. And I was upstairs, Blimey. and I was in, I was on the lakes. And then I wanted, and then I got the car. And then I got the house, and then I got the fucking best looking bird. Then I got the kids, and then I you started getting. So everything I've always asked for, I really, fuck, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. You got I've it. got. So the visualization and the manifestation works. Yeah. And it's, it's great now that people can understand it. But my point was be careful how you ask for it. Yes, exactly. Because like there's a bike. There's like the bike, like the bike, you know, like, you know, like the girl, the girl's really good looking. Oh, I love it. You got her, but she's a little bit. You you get her, and it's like, what? Get, get away from yeah, me. Yeah, just you know like, because yeah, yeah. I think your, your intent, is that the right word? The intent, the yeah, intent, intention, the intent, your, your yeah, intent yeah. has to be right. Yes. Because I, even when I, when I, I've, I've had, a, had a few problems and I couldn't pay the school fees, I couldn't, and I'm like, fucking hell, five mil. I started acting, I need five, I have five mil. Fuck if I had five mil. If I had five mil. If I had five mil. You know what I would do. Yeah. I'll, 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 got the five mil. Yeah. Went right. in the bank. Wasn't mine. It was money I that went in the bank, bank for a film. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, It yeah. wasn't mine. So, you, so I got the specific five enough. I wasn't you, uh, specific you, enough. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? And, you and you're looking at it in. and you've got to put the detail in. You know, and, and that's that old saying, be careful what you wish for. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, your yeah, mum used to say, be careful for, yeah, what yeah, you yeah, wish yeah. for and how you wish for it. I hope that fucker dies. I hope he fucking swallows, chokes on that. I hope he... Listen, you, you, you say it once, you're all right. It's yeah. a bit of anger. You keep yeah. saying it. Yeah, you got to start switching something, can yeah. You know what I mean? All of a sudden, one of your loved ones you hate for a minute. You, know, so you just, you just got to be careful. That is the truth. It's, it's what other people like, because you visualise once or twice, nothing's going to fucking change. And that's a good thing, because as you just said, how many times you wish bad bad luck or you've, you've thought a bad negative thought? If it and just happens straight away, you'd be fucked. So the universe gives us that time to... And it flips back on you, yeah, those it bad flips thoughts. Back, now, yeah, it, it flips back on you. There's definitely. a turkey saying, whoever's got the green eye, I hope their eye comes out, that yeah. jealous eye. And you see a lot of people with sons with yeah, one yeah, eye, yeah, yeah. and that's when they look at them, they look at them, they go, you lose your eye. Even if they're like... I ain't staying, I'm yeah. going near it, yeah. do you know what I mean? But even with acting, I've always wanted, you what know, you respect. Think? And I always used to see, when I used to go to clubs and stuff, I see these stars turn up young, because we, yeah. we used to be in a booze game, and I used to deliver booze and all that. I see all these De Niro's and all these people Quite turning right. up and getting all the attention. And something inside me was always, looking at oh, I level. wish I could be like that. I wish I could have that sort of respect and that love. And it was never to be a flash, it was just the admiral. I kept saying what yeah. I said earlier, just that the love energy, of people, yeah. that energy when when you come along, because listen, you can go from the hero to a villain overnight. And the Easy. place can yeah, of course. They they can, can, you can get yeah. one story. You one think, story, yeah. you're done. Um, but it was always that, and look. You, you people, people, you're one of, out of all the characters I've met, you've probably got one of the most biggest energies, and I ain't just saying that because you're really fucking, I remember when, you walked in Jimmy Bullard's pub, mate. It's like the old gaff looks at you like fucking. You got that movie star presence. You bowled in the gaff. Do you know what I mean? People used to say that to me all the time. You should be a movie star. You used to be a movie star, but back in the day, we were yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that kid <laughs> sitting in front of the camera. You got fucking you shot. slaughtered. Yeah, yeah annihilated. Really, you know what I mean? Did, can, but then yeah. I took a chance and going on to it, I took a chance. I thought, you know what? I've got an opportunity. I've got a window of opportunity. I'm going to step through that window and take How it. How did that come about? Take it. How did the acting come about? Well, again, it was it was I was nightclubs, restaurants. You know, hustling a deal here and there doing what we had to do, living on the wrong side of the tracks, you know, everything was a risk and, you know, the nick and this, that and the other. And it was just, I just got an opportunity to invest into a, a an acting agency. And I've always been a bit of a, you know, throwing a deal and having a deal. Got a deal. Yeah. yeah, people, I don't mean it was entrepreneurial then, it was just a deal. If someone had come yeah. along, go, listen, I've got this, give us a tenner for it and you go and sell it for 20 up the road. Yeah. <laughs> but then it got to the point where I started buying nightclubs and restaurants and, um, Remind me to tell you why I bought Greenwich Bar. Yeah, all right. Remind me to tell you why I bought Greenwich Bar. And, because um, it go back to the sports side of things yeah. and growing up. Um, where was I? Where was my, what was I saying? Greenwich Bar, they just threw me off track. No, oh, yeah, see, I'm like, like a fucking yeah, flight. Yeah, useless, mate. Fucking flight goes by, <laughs> Well, you said about you said about anyone anyone else? Anyone over there? <laughs> I'm fucking like two feet in the pod <laughs> yeah. here. Like, two old bastards here, little. Yeah. I don't know. What was I talking about? <laughs> I don't 
Yes, 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 sorry, yes, sorry, yes, yes, you'll edit that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it is. I'll fuck up and give a fuck, it's real, isn't it? Bollocks, go on. Yeah, it's just like, what, what, now you got a cartridge in there, wank now, go There's another one over there, isn't there? Bollocks, isn't it? So, so what happened was I got I got offered a uh, an opportunity to buy an acting agency, and I thought, yeah, you know what, it might sit with what we're doing. It's a sexy business. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm a part of it. And um, I met uh, I met my agent, who's still my agent, Camilla. You've met Camilla, yeah. haven't you, man? I think I know I've met her. No, yeah, you all meet her. Oh, everywhere sure. I go, she's there. But I met her, and, and then uh, we were sitting down talking about this, and she went, you ever thought about acting? Uh, I was very good looking back in the day. I'm yeah, spent now, but I was good. Oh, I, was good. Mate, I, was, still, I was good then. You still have me back, mate. Don't I? But but she said, "You're full about acting." I was. In, I remember where it was. I was in Bentley's. I think it, yeah, Bentley. And I came with a guy called Graham who used to frequent my nightclubs, and he was always bringing producers down, going, "Fucking hell, because I love clothes. I was always immaculately dressed. I'd always entertain people, sit at people's tables, dancing. I was just a great host. Yeah. You know what I mean? And. Uh, she said it as well, and she said, you ever thought about acting? Oh, fuck, I thought Graham had brought me down to see her, because she's trying to get me to get act. Me into it, yeah. I went, babe, listen, acting's a mugs game. Literal words, and they, 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 this plagues me for the rest of my life, because the press got all of it, and it just, ever I go, not that, you know, all actors are mugs, but for me, it was, it's hard enough making money in what you know, letting on what you don't know, don't, and every yeah. actor I knew was always subbing a tag. Yeah, skin a lot. Skin, all the skin, yeah, you know, skin. It's one of the things about music, you either crack you or you don't. Well, do you, you don't. No if you're a job in like actor, football, you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're, your average wage is, I think, five grand a year. The rest yeah. you've got to scrap, white tables and all that stuff. So I just said, I just said acting's a mugs game. I threw a couple of 50s down. I was opening Blue Eye at the time that day as well. I'll never forget. I was opening Blue Eye restaurant down in Beckenham. And I, I said, I've got to go. Chucked a couple of 50s down, walked out. I went, Graham, I said, I went, babe, I'll come and see you later. I'll have that deal, all right, and slipped. So Camilla went, as I walked out, she went, fucking playboy, good looking, wanna be gangster, fucking, <laughs> something like that, she went in on me. She went, but fuck me, she went, I'd like to put him in front of the camera. And at the time, she had a show called MTA, Model Turned Actor. She used to own cyber models, oh, and she had an right. idea of turning models into actresses because your model life is is very yeah. short and then after that to you got their, a career, yeah, to, you got a career on, to go in it, yeah. was, it was on tv at the time so she's a bit of a sketch really definitely got so they got me in she managed to get me in and they gave me this fucking monologue like i didn't even know what did not i've never seen a script didn't know anything <laughs> so give me this, give me this monologue it. some sci-fi monologue i mean you've got to have an hour with that and then come down and just deliver it to uh, so bang on you yes just stuff is straight on you mate and then uh I went in the room and, and, and I know now they did it on purpose. Cameraman's there, director, they're, they're all sitting there. It was like the armchair, fuck, I'm standing there, I'm fucking shitting myself. I'm like, fucking, got the hammer thrown for I said, this is bollocks. You want, to hear about, you want to hear a fucking story, do you? I'll give you a fucking story. And I gave him this story about some black we did on some rock. I said, ba 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 And they just went, ah. <laughs> I went, don't fucking call me again. And walked out. And then that was it. That was like, get him in, get him back, get him in, get him in, get him in, get him in. Because I got so frustrated. So I see the passion and I, felt, in, and I, I got bullied a lot. I felt like I was being bullied. Like, who the fuck are you? I don't need you. I've got plenty of readies. Yeah, don't, I don't, yeah, don't take what you're taking the piss. And every time I'm trying to read, shut your eyes, do it. But it was all, it was all, they were just sticking on me. See what yeah, I was doing? Yeah. Like, shut your eyes, don't look down, don't look down the page. Put your own, fuck, I don't fuck it. <laughs> who are you talking to? <laughs> Threw it down and took my story to camera and fucked off. <laughs> and then I came back, I came back in and, and she said, look, EastEnders is uh, coming, they want a villain. There's no dialogue or nothing. She went, we haven't got anyone that sort of on the books, that's sort of villainish. Put a leather jacket on, go down to Earl Street. Gone down to Earl Street. Blinding. What was that like, Sam, your first time? I shit myself. Yeah, I can imagine. Mate, I'd fight Mike Tyson. Yeah, but... Can't care. Yeah. But you're walking in something you don't know, yeah. but I've invested it's in this thing, and she's going like, it, yeah, she's saying like, it's the BBC, you know, we've had big clients, and we've got to send people down, and uh, Julia Cramsey, I think at the time was, I think she still is EastEnders, is um, uh, casting director, and I walked in, I'll never forget, we used to sort of have a business where we used to buy and sell boozers and wine yeah. bars and stuff, I won't go into it, no, but you know no, what we used to do, and we used to go and clean them up, and yeah. then... 
do them up and then away, away yeah. you go. And she, she, she used to use one of the wine bars that was ours. And I remember she, she I think she, she went, can you wait one minute? And I heard her say, we've got, we've got a real deal here. Well, like listen, they pulled the director off of, off of the set and said, come and have a look. So it was like a cow market, because East Enders then, 30 odd years ago, was, they, they, listen, they, they delayed the Champions League game for East Enders, the <laughs> Phil Mitchell shoot. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was the Phil Mitchell <laughs> shoot. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, and they said, yeah, we're, and I'm coming out of there, and Camilla's rung me, and she said, uh, you ain't going to fucking believe this, what do you mean you got the job? I got what job? She went, they want you for a week down at Elm Street on the Phil Mitchell shooting week. Blind. I was like, Tell him I'm dead. What do you mean, blind? I'm, I'm, even, I'm even more scared now. <laughs> Tell him I'm dead. Tell him I'm <laughs> dead. I'm not doing it. I'm not okay doing that. And then Frank Harper used to come down to my oh, restaurant. Yeah. And then uh, I knew Craig Fairbrass at the time. And Craig just said, listen, come down. You never know. You might like it. Just come have a bit of fun. You ain't got much dialogue. I think I said yes and no. All right. Was okay. Craig in there at that time? Yeah, he was oh, down. He was yeah. down. It was massive. It was yeah. a massive show. And it was... Yeah, and he came in at the time. Yeah, he, he said, I can't, I can't remember what he did, thing. but him and Phil was at each other. Yeah. And, so, he, and he said, listen, I'll look after you. And I went on set and I got to say, I didn't have a fucking wing and everything. I remember that. But you got your props. I went, what's that? <laughs> you went, your gun. I went, yeah, oh, okay. come on, <laughs> what's a mark? Eat your mark. What's a, I didn't know anything. Oh, no, Just like literally it. in the deep end and then director was sweet he, he said guy that you throw and what's his name who plays phil mitchell what's his name I don't know his real name. well he was brilliant i just put out he looked at me and went you never done this before have you i went no went, any constellation you're fucking brilliant oh what blind and I, I went he went i'll keep an eye on you don't worry so it was everyone was so, so lovely there. Yeah, look out and then other, craig yeah. i'll never forget craig and he still says it now he went he went he went put the camera on him he said he's gonna nick all the work one day <laughs> he still says it now. Does it? Wish That's I never said that. Yeah. I wish I never. Be said careful that. what you wish for. Be careful what, be careful so there you go. Be for, careful right, what yeah. you wish for. But thank God he did wish for that. But that—that's basically where it started. I was very lucky. I got. I did that. Then I did the bill. Judge John Deed. I got a little bit of apprenticeship work. Little, little uh, sort of a few scenes in in sort of soaps and and, and dramas. And then I got the calcium kid. Blinded, and that was with um, with Orlando Bloom, Ray yes. Ball, Michael Pena, Omid Jalili, Alex Durakoff, who's right and boxing man, was it? He's yeah, a boxing yeah, one. I played a comedy yeah. for Working Title, and it just went from there. And I did the Calcium Kid, Football Factory, the business. You can't I just did, get through them, bro. You can't. You can't just do that to us. But my, my, Factory, my but, business, but I know. Bro. But my point was what made it so good for me because exactly. there's always got to be an element of luck yeah. here, and there was no such thing as Netflix and. No, no, and all that then it was no, cinema three months later dvd if you're lucky yeah. you're gonna get the pirates yeah, yeah yeah you know what i mean you get the pirates so i had five cinemas out in the, i had five movies out in the cinema it's once and everyone went who the fuck is, is that where did he come from so there was always an element of luck and then all of a sudden it just went and the business come out everywhere we, that's the just went government out yeah, everywhere. everywhere it was, it was, that was your first main lead role wasn't it yeah it was lovely because for that one that one holds a little bit something special for yeah. me on other levels and i've never said this before i fell out with a family many years ago they had me over on a club and a restaurant they were close friends of mine and and karma this is why karma's beautiful because they had an off license down the old kent road and, and, and we were very close and then they had me over on the club. They robbed money off me. They Fuck grassed up my wife. They just turned into horrible people. And uh, what happened was, is the poster of the business was above their fucking <laughs> shop. <laughs> I was like, yes, have that, you yeah. fucking. It was above their you shop. Every establishment they had, it was above oh, their fucking it. establishment. <laughs> so I just looked up <laughs> and went, you know what, you're forgiving yeah. me, can't yeah. you? Yeah. See, you so see you later. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm looking so down was, at that the was, still yeah, That was a lovely moment for me. Yeah, that was, a lovely, yeah, that was yeah. a lovely moment for me. Um, <laughs> but how yeah, the business out of that. But well, that was a buzz doing that one, wasn't it? My first lead. Yeah, thank God for Nick Love. You know, Nick Love. There was uh, at the time it was Nick Love, Alex what Durakoff. Was first football factory. Or? Football factory. That was the first. It was a football factory, and what what I think Nick C was. I I, I loved Danny Dyer before I met him. Uh, I think I watched him in a film called Mean Machine, and he was. Yeah, I remember. It's just such a little character. He was always in the paper. And he was always lovely and i was always like Fucking, what a lovely i'd love to meet him and then we met uh on the football factory before like readings and that and we just we just really i mean we don't see much a lot of each other now but we just kind of clicked and 
you know, yeah, I just instantly become like a big brother to him. And then all of a sudden we got on so well on the football factory and we, our relationship offset was just so lovely. I think Nick and his genius and his brilliance, Nick Love, see that. And then he that went point. away and he had an idea and he wrote the Playboy and the Kid Frankie around you too, around oh, us too. Yeah. Um, and then he, he, you know, put in uh, Jeff Bell, or Sammy, and then Eddie Webber. He's firm, you know, we had him. And then the goat. He used yeah. to manage my band when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did yeah, it. Yeah, I used to manage yeah. Bell and Spurley. You do? No, Bell and Spurley. Yeah, yeah. I used to manage, I should manage them two fucking lunatics. <laughs> but then, then he kind of put it together and then it, it was just a beautiful fucking journey. And that was my, that was my first, first lead role or co-lead um you know some some people say it's danny's film some people say it's like the playboy role, but it's not it was it was a buddy movie it was me and him yeah it was it was me and him it was it was a beautiful journey i learned a lot from the man as well because uh, you have a lot you've got a lot of fucking pressure on your shoulders rob when you yeah. when you're when you're holding people's money when you're a lead that money sits on your shoulders so there's a lot on and you yeah. remember i'm untrained I'm watching Danny do bits, and even today, after I've, I've worked with everyone from Morgan Freeman to 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 fifty, to fifty, you know, fifty ben more Kingsley. obviously to Ben Kingsley, and I work with a lot, and I, I always t even fifty, I take something away from everyone that's been a success in their field, even to this day, I'm, and I'm always I ask questions. I'm set. I'm, I used to be like a five year old kid. What's the red light for on the camera? That means it's da da da. What's the green one? That means it's da. -da. What's the lens for? I don't know. And I'm still to this day. I don't know. Yeah, inquisitive. And I ask. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I always ask. I'm smiling on my face. I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm six foot four and built like brick shit. Because <laughs> so people so always I'm give so me the answer. They know it's everything. Tell me the fuck off. So I'm educating myself. I'm using. I'm yeah. using my tools. My God-given tools to educate myself. But and that's that's basically where it is. But even all of that, you know, speaking about what the topic is, I've always everything I've wanted, I've got from you know from the wife to the kids to my daughter to to my success to my cars to my clothes to my friends and i'll get rid of friends like that mate. yeah like that i i'm so loyal and so giving and so heartfelt my heart breaks the betrayal of what someone yeah. does to me you know this piece of shit um uh stole 2.2 .2 million quid off me it was a brother of mine brother and he extracted it off me over the years because i'm too soft and i'm too trusting i don't google people i don't i always work off of first That's instincts bad, yeah. energy i don't care what listen if you're a rapist or a pedophile and you've got that history yeah, that's a different thing off. but yeah. you know everybody's always fucked up in business everybody's always gonna no one squeaky clean and mm. ain't got a bit of bad press because we all fuck up somewhere yeah, life, so I, yeah, yeah and that's yeah. life so if you're a decent person and you're loyal to me those bits from your yeah. past i don't want to see them yeah i don't actually so, care as long yeah. as you're good with me yeah moving forward because i'll never break a relationship as you know the yeah, minute 100%. we when i see you in the pub it was as yeah. if we'd known each, each other, other forever yeah, like yeah, i walked yeah, yeah, outside yeah. the rock but we haven't even had a cuddle do you know what i yeah, mean yeah, so yeah. i went fucking hell we haven't yeah, met yeah, no, we've had that. Do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. but that i'm easy to get on with and i'm very loyal no, and giving but then when you get when you get you know when you get heartbroken it's the betrayal that kills me mm. you see what i'm saying and that's yeah i've had it a few times it does it yeah and it, and it rips you to pieces it ain't even the money it's not the money it's the money and that's what's put me in a hole and that's what's made me lose my whole mindset of positivity of of manifesting because i think how the fuck have you done, done that, that to, to me, me? Yeah, yeah. what have i done to deserve this and then it's easy to get into that fucking mindset of oh i can't and yeah. me being an angry man anyway and i've done a lot of bad things in my life and i have to deal with these fucking demons in my yeah. head anyway i kind of if you see me and people start on me i'm not doing it now and i'm fucking but yeah but yeah. If, you, if you see me and sometimes i go quiet and people think it's just a move or me being you know, people start me in my early career. People go, "Oh, you think you're tough, you can't, because you're in the movies." And my mates would go, "Leave me alone, don't yeah, say just, you leave, cold, just leave me yeah. alone." And then I'll go, and when I know it's real, people shout at me. I just go quiet because I, I, I picture in my head what I'm going to do, and and I'm going to myself down. Stop so I'm stopping myself yeah, in the yeah. head, so I can't even see what you're doing. 
I can't even see you because I'm not scared of you. I'm yeah, scared yeah. of me. Yeah, yeah. What do you understand? Do so, and yeah, listen, yeah. it could go. I could. Uh, you way, know, I'm yeah. not saying I'm going to beat every person, but it could go either way. So I sit there quiet sometimes, and I'm like, I, I, I go gone, and I'm just like, and then I, I, I come out of it, and I, and hopefully by then that gauntness and that fear and that energy has made them like back down. Back down a bit, yeah. And then yeah. nine times I pull out of it, and then I will go. And they go, and I go, look, all right, man. I go, oh, come on, let's have a hug. And yeah, just, yeah, it's always, back, yeah, and you yeah, just break yeah, it yeah. out. So for me, that's that's kind of where where I'm at with 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 friends and people, and you know, and and that's the only thing that brings me down. My point was when I go down, I go fucking down, down mate. And it's like I've been to AA, NA, I've been to all of these places, and they help that much. But I tattooed I am on my on my yeah, yeah. on my fist with, with, with the three dots. Yeah, when I was 50, it's, it's ne I call it tagging. I don't call them tattoos. I'm just tagging. I've got a couple of bits on my back that I, that I, that mean something to me. And people go, don't put it on your hand. I'm like, no, because if I'm putting it over here, it's, it's like fashion. No, this is, this is something for this people is to see. Yeah. This is for me to see all the time. And I am, for me, is the, is the two biggest, yeah, most no, powerful words on that. No, in, in no any stronger. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I was like, I yeah, you know, and, I, and I go into, oh, I'm going to do this. Oh, I may... I'm this and I'm that and I and, and I stay there for so long and then eventually I'll get out the other side by the grace of God thank you to whatever it is or whatever energy or whatever being pulls me out but I get out the other side and when I get out the other side I'm fucking great again yeah yeah but I know you have to I, go in yourself you have while. to go in and then pull out but, but I do you do. think that's a part of life in general I think we all have to do that anyway just for contrast of life I think sometimes I think it's a, I think that, that that's a tool that I think that you can really help people with Robert I think that's something I'm very headstrong anyway I have this this whole energy and like you know the wife and my friends and my kids and because I don't say anything they think it's a don't give a fuck mechanism yeah you don't give a fuck why are you so cold I'm not I'm the warmest person on the planet yeah. but it's just something within me that oh, goes yeah. I can't get hurt and it, yeah, it's a mechanism yeah. that just hits there and I go Boom. You're calling me a dog, you're calling me a slag, you're calling me this, you're calling me a bully, you're calling me narcissist, da, da, da. and people's tongues are vicious. Mm. And they keep doing it, keep, and it used to affect me, it used to get me down yeah. and fucking have me, well, how can you say that? But now I just go like that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't let it in, yeah. No, don't let it, don't let it, let it, in. it in. I go, you finished? Feel better now? Fuck, you're looking in the mirror that's what your problem is yeah, that's what that is isn't it? And that's, that's what i say but i do that now i've got a great ability of flipping it back on them now do you know what I mean? you want to scream them i'll turn the telly up <laughs> i'm gonna lock myself in the room go and beat the shit out the door and then i climb out the window and call you a wanker and fuck off do you understand what i'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah, that yeah. i don't get in it i don't i, I won't get raise a hand to a woman that, i won't yeah. get drawn into that bullshit whereas before it used to fucking have me Yo, shit, dad, you're what this, would you you're recommend that, you recommend know? people, the, like anyone listening to him on that, what would you recommend anyone who does suffer with that? What would you recommend them to start doing? Listen, everybody has to find their own way through it. If, if, uh, it's not for me to tell anybody how to deal with those emotions, mm -hmm. because every emotion is a choice, as you know. You know, if don't be that person, or I can say, don't be that person, it's blaming everyone. He makes me unhappy. He's made me skin. Yeah, it's that outside of he, he He treats me like shit. She's done this, she's done that. Because nobody makes you feel like anything yeah, yeah. by you, you. Unless you allow it, yeah. And it's, it, it's an easy statement, you know. It's not a cliche, it's fucking reality. Mm. If they're making you unhappy, cut them loose. Oh, yeah. If you can't deal with what the pressure they're giving, if you can't deal with the words, and I don't care if you've been married to them for 30 years, I don't care if you've got kids with them. I don't care if you're codependent on them. Because I'm telling you, you'd rather be happy yeah. sitting in a bed seat than miserable in a mansion. Yeah, that's true. Do you understand yeah, what I'm true. saying? Yeah. And trust me, because some people don't realise that. Don't be codependent. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Listen, you're, you're in control of your greatness. If anybody gets in the way of your greatness, cut the fuckers loose, that, mate. Yeah. See yeah. you later. And sometimes it's hard. But it doesn't matter. Uh, this year ago, when I was learning NLP, and I was saying, 
they say blood's thicker than water, but they're saying if that blood's making your life hard or, or causing you pain and injuries, then you've got to cut it. Well, it's cliche. That yeah. old, old saying, keep your friends close, your enemies close. Enemy's close. Of bollocks, Biggest yeah. lot of bollocks I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> really? Hello, yeah, enemy, yeah, come and have a cup of tea. I'll cook you a bit of dinner. Yeah, I'm glad you're Just because I want to hear what you've got to say. Yeah, fuck that. No, yeah. mate, that's in a fucking, that's a in a, that's in a stupid little gangster film that gets stuck in stuck in you. And it's, you know. I don't know. I'm going to go, what's meant to be one pass you by? I think, well, the bollocks, you've got to create what you want you got to see what you want you got to go and, you, you got know to go what I'm saying didn't you yeah. which one you, got you know what I'm saying well I've got a few listen all that bollocks you know I oh, don't worry you know if one door closed another one are open yeah, yeah. no 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 shut that door in my face I tell you I dare you <laughs> if I can't kick it through yeah, I'm going around the back climbing through, through the window and saying I'm here <laughs> now you can get out if you want but I ain't moving <laughs> go and get it Refuse, right, refuse it, to lose. Go and get it. That's and listen, it's okay, okay to lose. Perseverance. Sorry. Every sorry, go on, Tom. It's okay to lose. I had this old saying, and I kind of pulled out that refuse to lose. I taught my kids that refuse to. It's okay to lose, mate. Yeah. I've learned that growing up. It's okay to fail. But as long as you give hundred percent. You know, foul. It's yeah. not a problem. Makes you, you know, it makes you a better person. Yeah. It's all right to fail. Whereas before, you're a failure. You get put that in grinding. You're a failure. It's like, and there's no such thing as failure. There's only information. You can look back at what you've done wrong, and you learn yeah. from it. Brilliant. And exactly that, Rob. Pers- what well, I've noticed again, talking to like all you know, like Dan Kelly Holmes, yourself, Wayne Lineker, you know, lo- loads of other people, you know, who have really achieved a lot in their life, they all end up talking about like what you just said then, in a, in a, in a way, perseverance. About just keep, keep fucking going. going. And, and that's look, what I'm hearing time and time again. You know again. what it is as well? And don't ever think, and I've had this, I've made this mistakes, I've made millions. Mm. Some easy, some hard. But then, you know, like you think, oh, mate, don't be, don't be locked on to holding on to that dough. I've got a cough. I've lost it before. I don't want to lose it again. I don't. It's fine, mate. Mm. Enjoy yourself. Don't worry about it. Stop chasing it. Listen, I'm going to be the man who owes the bank 300 mil. I'm not going to be that one who's got 300 mil <laughs> in the bank. Yeah, yeah, Do you yeah, understand yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, you, get, yeah. you get pulled into this whole manipulation this mass manipulation it, it, it concept it's imagination of, isn't it yeah because when you die it's just fuck all you no one owns anything you're coming you nothing you're going nothing you never own, yeah, you never you own, own anything really. I've said this yeah, to you you, know, telling me that. you so, get pulled yeah. into this you get pulled into this whole uh, manipulation mass mm. manipulation of mindset go to nursery go to infant school do this university go to university take the loan yeah. you, you, they're owning you from that day on Get married, have two kids, a detached house, an estate car, retire, I'll pay your tax, retire, see you later. Bollocks, pardon my French. I don't know if there's any, if I'm allowed to swear on this, but bollocks to that, mate. mate. You never own anything. I'm going to be a multiple um, uh, uh, property owner. Who owns them when you're gone? That's right. Nine times, you still don't own them. Unless they're unencumbered, you don't own them. The bank still owns them. And then when you're done, the bank, you can't even leave it for your kid. They take, but yeah, the you can't even massive If you can, let's, let's the ballpark bigger, you leave a million house a million quid for your kids, forty percent death tax on that. Bollocks. Hang on, it gets worse. If the kids don't pay the four hundred grand, they're out. They throw them out the house. They're gone. Oh, okay, That's what I'm saying. They're gone. That's not in it. Listen, give your kids this. Give them what you can. Leave them what you can. Give your kids the tools to Do fucking it. survive. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Give them that. My kids, by the grace of God, they are me. They're still joined to my hips. My son's a mini me. You met my Tash. He's a, my daughter. Look at her. She's beautiful, Fine. successful, talented, driven, strong. They've got that. Now, that's the best thing I can, can do. Yeah. If I go tomorrow, they'll be all right. You know, they, we can, all know that. they can look after But if I haven't got anything, because now, listen, I had my kids when I was... 20 years old. I've, I've, I gave up everything for them. It's my turn to live now, mate. Yeah, 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 You've all yeah, got your asses, you've yeah, got your yeah, kids, yeah, you've made yeah. me a granddad, which I'm thankful for. Now I've got to yeah. live. Oh, I do sit there whining about you, mate. <laughs> Go on, crack on. What is next for you now, Tom? I know you've got the, um, the cars, you've bought um, your partner in. Cannon Run. Run. The yeah, Cannon Run. Cannon Run. How's uh, that all going? Cannon yeah. Run's brilliant. We're taking it to the next level. That's go again, another manifestation. Yeah. I'll tell you a story around that uh, with, and I didn't know this, my sister told me, Jay Cannon, who uh, masterminding and, and, and he's the founder of the Cannon Run rallies. He's always been into auto sports and he's a great kid because his father's worth tens and fifties, hundreds of millions, right? And he could, he's the only child and he could, he could inherit that and he could have a great life working with his dad. You know, yeah. he could spend 10 grand a week on, on anything, do what he wants when his old man passed, he'd be left 50, 60 mil. He didn't do that. 
he went out and done his own thing. And it, it, there was a story that my sister told me he was in Turkey and they was out there doing some content and stuff. And he fell in love with my sister. My sister's beautiful. And uh, he said, I've got to tell you, he said, they were talking about manifestation and stuff. And he said, I've been trying to get Tamara on my rally since day one, right? And I was I, I was always on a gumball rally. Yeah. Maximilian was a friend of mine. And something happened where I couldn't get on the gumball rally because I was filming the same, but I have to do some kind of auto sport, as you know. Love I've got to race or do something. I'll get in the car and just have a bit of boy time. Listen, most men go to golf, fishing. Yeah, you like your mugs. I've got to get in a car and I've got to drive and travel the world. And you know what I mean? I love driving. So something happened and... I said to come in, I said, Jesus, look, they, they, he's driving me mad, this Jay Canny, he wants to bring you on the, on the car. I said, well, I haven't got a car. He'll give you a car. He'll give you a So I said, fuck it. I said, I'll go on. <laughs> I'll go on. He had seven cars or something on his rally. The minute I announced I was on it, he went, his whole life turned. His whole life turned around. And I'm so happy for him. For yeah. that. I mean, you know me, I'm a giver. I'm so happy for that. And it, I only found this out this year when he was in Turkey. My sister told me, I said, I love that kid. She went, no, no. When he was telling me the story, he was like near to tears. It was so beautiful. She went, how much he was talking about it. And then I went on the rally and I liked him. He's a little control freak, a little fucker. <laughs> but I thought, you know what? You're my little fucker. Yeah, you know, yeah. I like you. You, you. you get out and you're having a go. And he never said nothing to me. Now we're, uh, listen, we're, we do four or five rounds and I wanted to come in from the start and he kept saying to me him and his partner Jay Waldy he kept saying to me we're not ready for you yet and I'm thinking you know these bits kicking yeah, you think, yeah, you're yeah. fucking using me you're fucking using me you're doing it and they just kept saying look trust me we're not ready for you yet so what I did I said listen you've got to do this this ain't right that ain't right I was teaching them how to bring in big names on what you've got to do da, da, da. mate we do five six events a year the minute he announces them, they're sold in two days. God, man. And I'm so happy for them. And, they, and they've, yeah, they've come along and they've gone, listen, we want you to be a part of that. So with, with working with the Gumball Rally, I've slowed down filming a little bit now. I'm going into producing and doing my own stuff. I am obviously love acting. That's my passion and my, and my love and, and, and that's my happy place. But we're, we're, we're doing... A, we're doing um, we're doing... We're putting films together, writing. I, I will direct one day. A lot of people's asked me to direct. I'm not ready for it yet because directors don't sleep and I'm a lazy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be treated as a prince, get picked up, go to work, do my thing, go home. But I will do one there. But right now, I'm enjoying life. I'm, I'm enjoying the lockdown. Yeah. I'm, I'm resetting myself. The planet's resetting. A lot of people are sort of thinking about all these conspiracy theories. And one thing I can say is don't listen to them. No. Yeah, don't listen to them. Just go with your gut, go with your heart you understand what's happening and listen if it's any consolation we've been through this a million times we've been through two world wars man. yeah yeah you know people there's been pandemics around the world there's been you know i mean i see some pictures go back for, you know for spanish flu and stuff people been wearing masks we will get through it mate yeah we will get through it and it will be all right right sam so um you asked me to remind you about the greenwich borough football club so what was the story behind that yes i did it was uh it's, this one's probably, if I could put it that way, it's an angry manifestation, but it worked. What happened was when I was growing up as a foreigner uh, around playing in the Kent League, I was never great, but I was, I'd always score a goal and I was always solid. I was solid up front, uh, great first touch, put the ball in the air, nine yeah. times out of ten I'm scoring, right? So I'd, I'd, I'd move around these Kent clubs with friends of mine that were good footballers, um, and I, I, and I knew I was good enough to play, but I'd always be sort of the token and sort of put a go there because oh, I know him, put him on the bench and I'd come on and I'd come on and I'd score a goal and then like to be, to sub the sub is a really humiliating and yeah. embarrassing thing, especially when you score, you know, a goal that gets you a point or a win and they just fucking kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And I swore, I took an oath that I said, I'm going to buy that Greenwich Bar one day and I'm going to fucking out the lot of them, mate. And you know what? I bought a nightclub <laughs> up the road, Dorotons, right? I remember Dorotons. And, yeah. then, I, and then I, I went down and I started playing. And then they did it again. I went, all right, sweet. They wanted a chairman. Put myself forward for a check for the chairman. And then I, I went in there, the committee. I went, listen, it's not for me, this football. I said, I'll come in as a chairman. I'll pay the wages. Two grand, two grand a week, the wages was back then, which is yeah, big yeah, dough, yeah, yeah. right? The minute I signed that and I took that club, 
The lot of them. I was that angry about. I made myself the chairman, player, manager. I took all the free kicks, all the corners, right? I was the groundsman, the kit, kit man, the lot. The only thing I weren't was a fucking sub. <laughs> and so you're saying if you can't make it, take it. If you can't make it, take it. But that, that was an angry manifestation. But I got it in. It must have felt good. Though. And it felt it beautiful. Have... I had that club for 15 years and it did a lot of good in the community. But yeah, it felt fucking good, man. Felt good. Thank you very much, Tim. Just in the time to cutting on there. Well, I've been amazing. Um, quite deep today, Tim. It was quite a real. We're doing another one. I don't think we really did enough, did we? Three o'clock, fuck yeah, it. Always had me over two hours. <laughs> thank my you, pleasure, Tim. mate. Honestly, my pleasure. Thank you so I talked much. you to death. My pleasure. So, everyone, thank you very much for joining us again. And we'll be back next week at the Mindclap Podcast. And um, thanks again to this glorious man, a pure gentleman. And um, my pleasure. Always there for anyone, as I noticed. You know, you're always there for anyone who needs help. You're always there. <coughs> I, so I, like so I appreciate that, mate. Appreciate it. Thank you, bro. Thank you very much. Thank you. Speak to you next week, guys. See you soon.